in the woods Afternoon, guys. Dave Canberra at the Pathfinder School. Uh, what I wanted to do today was I want to have a little discussion about napping and napping glass in general. Um, you know, my mentality tells me, or my survival sense tells me, if that's what you want to call it, that, you know, in a long term survival scenario, especially in this day and age, flint is not going to be an easy commodity to be had. It's not going to be very easy to find. You'd be lucky to find a shard that's good enough to strike your flint and steel striker with. Quartz will be easier to find than flint, most likely, in most areas of the United States. So, nappable material to make arrowheads and things with is probably not going to be very common at all. What is going to be very, very common is glass. So, if you're going to practice a skill like napping arrowheads, you might as well do it for free. Go out in the woods and find some glass bottles and get after it with some handmade tools. You don't have to use antler, but you can. You can use antler, you can use nails, you can use copper. There's a lot of tools that can be made very cheaply to nap with that are very common man. And napping glass arrowheads, those things are very, very effective. Don't ever think they're not. Uh, obsidian is volcanic glass. Lots and lots and lots of animals can be killed with glass arrowheads. Yes, you might break it on the first shot, but you're just as likely to break a, an arrowhead on the first shot that's made out of obsidian or made out of flint or made out of chert as well. So remember that because I think it's an important lesson to understand that we should be practicing with the resources that will be available to us when the situation comes. Glass will be available. It goes back to that 12 gauge mentality of what's going to be available. 12 gauge 22, that's going to be available. Well, glass is going to be everywhere. Flint's not. Stay with me guys, we'll get started. Okay, so here's a couple of glass bottle bottoms I've picked up out of the woods, and there's no telling what these things are. One of the things that I really look for is when I'm looking for glass to make arrowheads with, and this is the best medium for you. This is what you're going to find. If you're not going to come across a bunch of flint to make arrowheads with, near as often as you're going to come across glass in a world that we live in now where people just throw trash in the woods at will, glasses everywhere both of these bottles are probably old but what I look for is I don't want too much of a crown on the inside I've got a convex bottom here but I have to look at the other side too because I'm gonna have to build up convexity so the more indention I have here or the more concave that bottom is the worse off I'm gonna be because I've got to build convexity in the long run to make this a good point and that's important to understand all right so the first thing we've got to do is we've got to break all this edge off of this bottom we can do that with a variety of tools from some type of copper and this is just a piece of copper pipe that's been filled with lead got a wooden handle in it and a bolt through it to make a bopping device or a pressure flaking device you could use a piece of antler for that works very well also or you can just use rocks all of those things will work they just all take practice to understand how to manipulate them because everything acts a little bit different Glass is a good medium to practice with because glass will actually break a lot easier than, than flint will. So that is a two-fold issue. First of all, it's a good thing because it's easier to flake than flint. Bad thing about it is it's also easier to break than flint, which means it's easier to make mistakes and break an entire piece that you've been working on for, you know, 20 or 30 minutes. So you just really have to kind of take your time with this stuff to keep from breaking it. Right now, what we've got to do is we've got to get this edge off of here. You can see this concodial fractures right here. We've got to get that edge broken down so that we can get a nappable edge on this thing. If we could get us a place where we can break that bubble over one time, we'd be doing something. Okay, we're getting there. You see, we can, we're breaking it down to the edge, but we still haven't busted over this other side yet. We've got to get to that point before we're going to be able to do anything. And we just really got to take our time so we don't break this thing. You know, it's hard to say how old this piece of glass is. It's out of the woods could be a little bit more fragile 
than glass is today. It's probably a piece of antique glass from the looks of it. Doesn't really have many markings on it and they're very blurry. Most of your newer glass has got some pretty easy to read markings on it. The other thing that makes me think this might be an antique bottle is the glass isn't real uniform. This edge over here is a lot thicker than this edge is. So I think that this is probably an antique bottle, which is okay. Just means we got to be a little more careful with it. Just can't get one to quite go over the top of this edge very easy. And that's a key to making this happen. I'm kind of flattening it out a little bit now to try to force one to break over the edge. And it's still not quite coming over the top there. But that's all right. We'll get there. That was a pretty good breakout right there, but it still broke pretty flush. Okay. Well, let's kind of abrade this thing up and kind of just see what we got. And abrading just means that you are polishing it down a little bit and exposing platforms. So that you have something to nap against, but it also makes them stronger. So that when you push against them, they don't just crush. A lot of napping is just evaluating the piece that you're napping and understanding what you have to do next to make it work. We've got to get convexity here. You can see we've got a concave bottom. And we've got a convex top. To make this a good flying arrowhead, it has to be convex on both sides. You know, and it also has to be fairly thin. And that's something that I see a lot of people will show an arrowhead and they'll say, look at this arrowhead I made. And it'll be really nice shaped. But looking at it from this side is the key to a good arrowhead. If that thing, you know, it can be as nice looking as it wants to right here. When you flip it this way, if it's this wide, it's not going to fly right on your arrow. Remember that you're making arrowheads that should be 100 to 125 grains in weight. That's a pretty small arrowhead for a self-bow or survival bow. You can't put some monstrous piece of rock on there and expect to get any distance out of it. So you really got to be careful with that too. Okay, now, you see how those broke over the top? That's what we needed to happen right there. That was really what we needed to happen. Because now that's going to allow us to go around here one time, make a pass like that. And we'll have some platforms to work with when we go back and do this again from the other side. I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. Okay. Let's braid this thing up now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take some flakes off the other side. Up to now we've been banging on this side, driving flakes here. Now we want to drive flakes this direction. Because what we want to do is we always want to try to take our flakes from below the center line of our piece. Okay? So if we're looking at this piece just straight on, okay, we know that this area right here that we just abraded is all below the center of this piece. So that's where we should be driving our first flakes off of. So we'll just abrade that up real good. And then we'll get our hand pad, our piece of rubber here. And you could make this piece of rubber out of a tire. Plenty of them in the woods. And all you're doing is trying to give yourself a channel to pop flakes off.
Now you could use a nail for this as well. It doesn't have to be necessarily a piece of antler or a piece of copper. It could be a steel nail. Ishii used nails all the time. Now you can see how we're starting to pop some flakes off of this thing. The advantage to using a piece of rubber like this and giving yourself a channel is generally you can drive a longer flake that way. Not always, but generally. Okay, what I've got in my hand now is called an Ishii stick and basically Ishii liked to take a nail and put it in a longer flexible branch where he could actually tuck it into his side and get pressure to push flakes off. Copper works really good on glass and you can see you know where I'm at some of these flakes are long some of them are short but what we got to concentrate on is getting this side flaked off but we had to take flakes off this side first remember because of our center line issue. So let's abrade this thing down now and see where we're at on our center line and see if we have to take another pass at that same side or whether we can start knocking flakes off the other side yet because the other side's what we're going to have to get to to get convexity over there <coughs> okay let's take a look at this thing here now you can see you know we're still to the point where we really can't take any flakes off this other side yet because we still got we're still below center line so we really need to pop another row of flakes off of this side and that's okay when that happens you just continue on and you do it so we'll pop another row of flakes off that side all the way around and hopefully that will bring our center line down to where it needs to be You can hear that thing popping. Usually when it pops like that, you got a pretty good flake. You don't hear that popping, you probably didn't get a very good flake. You just got to keep rotating it around, taking those flakes off a little at a time. Until we get what we need. Okay. We went around taking another one off now. Another row. Pop this off. Here we go. Okay, now let's abrade it again and see what we end up with. I think we're getting to the spot we needed to be here real quick like. We've got a couple places that are still high. But now we're getting to the point where we can start taking some flakes off below center line over here, and that's a good thing. But we've got a couple places right here we need to address first and get those off of there. So that we're working on completely on that other side when the time comes.
Okay. That's looking pretty good. Now, when we look at this piece, now these ridges or platforms are below center line. Now we can push flakes off this side and start trying to get some convexity built up over here. That's important. You hear that pop pop? That means you're doing something right usually. Generally speaking anyway. If you hear that crush, that before it pops, that usually means your platform crushed underneath you. You probably didn't get a very good flake on that one. Good. Got a contrary spot here. We're going to have to work on. We got a contrary spot. That's okay. We're just going to have to knock one flake off the other side, I think, to raise that platform up where it needs to be. Okay, yeah, that should have got us where we needed to be to get that knocked down the other side. Okay, we're getting somewhere now. We've got some flakes starting to run in here, but to get convexity, we're going to have to get those flakes to go all the way across on the, on the concave side, and we haven't got that yet. We pretty much got them all the way across on the convex side, but now... We've got to get some across here. And remember, you know, this arrowhead is only going to be probably, you know, three quarters of an inch wide by maybe an inch and a quarter long when you're done. So you really got to get these flakes to run long and fast because you got to get some meat off this thing. It looks like we're going to be taking some more flakes off this other side here in just a second. So we'll braid it up and we'll go from there. Okay, guys, we're getting there now. We've got them running toward the middle. Hope you guys can see that. We still got that letter A right in the middle, so we haven't gotten rid of that yet, and we haven't got all the way to the middle. But on this side, you can see there's just a little spot right there. Everything else is to the middle. But we still don't have that convexity that we're looking for on both sides. So again, you know, you've got to take your flakes below center line. So it's time to abrade this thing up again and see where we're at. Right now, it looks like we're doing good at staying below center line here. So we can continually knock flakes off this flat side and try to get it rounded up. And that's a good thing. Because that's really what we need to do. Now you notice I'm putting my hand on the back of that piece. And when I decide I'm going to take a flake off that platform, I'm supporting the back of that thing and I'm just pushing in and down. So I'm pushing in, and then I'm popping sideways. In, popping sideways. That is going to give you the best chance of running long flakes.
Now you see, we got rid of that A. That last flake went straight across the middle there, and that A is now gone. That's good. That's a step in the right direction. Now let's kind of evaluate this thing for a minute here. Now that we've got flakes clear across this thing. Never be afraid to abrade, you know it, until you're finishing your piece. Because sometimes that'll help you evaluate things and slow you down and help you think about what you're doing. Okay, now we've got ourselves in a position where we can start taking some off of this side that's really convex. Because we started to get this flattened out now. Now we want to take some chunks off this side. And we've got some areas that are below center line we can do that with now. That's important too. Even though it's already convex on that side, we really need to lose some of the thickness. Now we got to start evaluating some things here and see where we need to take meat off at. Now we're going to be a little bit more selective about where we push flakes off of because we need to start running them into areas where we need them to get rid of material and not where we don't. See those two great big flakes that just came out right there? That took a lot of thickness out of the back side of that, and that's what we need. There's another big flake that came off right there. That's what we're looking for. Constantly evaluating what you're doing and looking at your piece is what's important. Now we're getting a lot thinner and that's what it's all about. Now we need to start looking at the shape of this arrowhead. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll use what's called it's a, it's a raking device. Basically it's just a flattened piece of copper. And basically what you can do with that is you can use that to kind of bring up some of your edges. And you can also use it as a shaping tool. And really that's what I want to start doing is shaping this piece now and getting it into arrowhead shape and start building up some symmetry of the piece. That's important. Okay. And you can see what I'm doing. I'm starting to build symmetry in my piece. And while I'm doing that, what that's doing is that's bringing my platforms down again to where I can take off the thicker side like I need to. So all of this stuff is important. And it's all steps in the process. I'm not making a particular style or type of arrowhead here. This tool helps break your edges down a little bit and gives you, buys you a lot when it comes to bringing up platforms from one side of the other to kind of help you get where you need to go, so to speak, to get thickness off of one side or the other. You just got to be careful you don't do this when the glass is too thick. Or you'll snap it right off. Okay. I'm pretty happy with that shape that we've got going on right there. Obviously our point's going to be up here. But right now what we've got to do is we've got to thin this thing out some more. Now we've got to where we can do that. We need to abrade this. And really concentrate on where our flakes come off of now. 
so that we thin this piece out. Like I said, you know, arrowheads can be pretty from the front and ugly from the side. And the thinner the arrowhead is, the better it's going to cut. The thicker it is, the more you're going to get, you know, just blunt force trauma. Okay. Now is when we start to get, start to kind of get jittery because now you've got a lot of work into something like this. And if you mess it up now, you mess it up. So every flake that we take off of here now is important. And we got to watch every one of them. You see how deep those are going into, into the middle of that piece? Those are good thinning flakes. But the thinner you get this thing, the easier it is to break it too. So you got to think about that. And I'm being real careful, just trying to take little, little bits at a time off of here. If it don't want to break, I'm not forcing it to, I can tell you. I'd rather take something off of it with a flaker than to try to force it off and have it break on me now. Okay, so now what I'm really doing is I'm going down through here and just taking very, very fine sharpening flakes off of the edge. Supporting it from the back all the time. So it doesn't break. I'm not worried about this edge being sharp or this edge being sharp because that's where I'm going to notch it. What I'm worried about is this edge right here. And these are very, very, very fine, fine serration flakes. That's all these really are. You can see this pieces of glass popping off of there is real small concodial fractures I'm gonna pop a flake off of there right there just to make sure it's not too thick right there where I want to notch it sometimes that can cause you an issue reach in here with this antler flaker or with this Ishi stick I can reach in there pretty good as you can see with that you can see how I reached right up in there pop that out now we got to do the same thing on this other side okay now we're gonna notch this side
Okay, that's well, not too bad. See if I can zoom in on that for you. Okay, there's my finger beside it so you can kind of see the size of it. And it's a little bit out of symmetry. I can work on that just a little bit over on this side, probably trimming this down symmetry a little bit better right there the more you look at these things the more you want to mess with them the more you mess with them the more chance you take a break in them but I think I'm gonna have to call that good it's nice and thin plenty of surface area to cut good hafting right here probably pop a flake right off this back side here that would make it easier to haft by pushing in and down I'm not even sure I want to chance that looks like there's a platform there but could be a broken arrowhead if I do that too okay that's it I'm done messing with it a little bit of a channel right there so it'll half good and I'm pretty happy with that start out with a beer bottle and you end up with that you're in pretty good shape that will definitely kill animals okay guys well I hope you guys enjoyed this video on napping glass it's not the first video I've done napping a glass arrowhead but I think it's important to understand and to realize that we should be practicing with the materials that are available to us glass is going to be very prevalent flint is not so don't wait until you can find flint to learn how to nap go out and get you some bottles go get some glass start napping and having fun with it learn that skill put in the dirt time now so that you have it and when you can make your bow if you decide to go that way you can make glass arrowheads to go with your arrows and you're already in business without having to worry about looking for flint or shirt thanks guys i appreciate your support i appreciate your views i appreciate everything you do for me for my family for my business and for all of the pathfinder affiliates we thank you very much and i'll be back as soon as i can